In this video, I want to demonstrate how to make a drawing from a part. So I have my part open. The next step is to come up to the drop down menus. So I'm going to select File. Then I'm going to come down until I want to make a drawing from the part. So next, SolidWorks will open the new SolidWorks document window. It's to my folder where my custom templates are. This part was created in Inch. So I'm going to choose one of my Inch templates and I'll choose a B size sheet. And then I'll say OK. And a blank drawing will open with the view palette open. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to use the view palette. It is a great thing to make drawings from and very handy, but I'll address it in later videos. So for now, I'm just going to click back on the sheet in white space to close that. A couple of things I want to point out is right now the title block is empty other than the drawing number. Because I said I want to make it from this part, it has populated this part's drawing number in the drawing number field of the title block. So next, I'm going to add the three standard views. Working from the Drawing tab, or in older versions of SolidWorks, it'll be called the View Layout tab, I'm going to tell I want to create three standard views. So I'm going to click the three standard views. And the three standard view property window will open up. What's listed here will be all my open parts with the one I've told it I want to make the drawing from highlighted. Because I just have one part open, it's the only one here, and it's highlighted. If it's not the actual part I want to make the drawing from, I can browse to the proper part here and correct it. But it is, so I'm just going to say OK. And I'll accept that, and I have my front, top, and right side view. If I don't like the view placement, I can get near a view, and when I do, notice how I get this orangey red rectangle. So if I want to move the right side view, I can click on it and I can drag it over here. But by default, it's locked in alignment with my front view, so I can't drag it up. I can just drag it side to side. If I get near the front view and click, I can move the front view around, and you'll notice how the top and right side view move with it. Same thing for the top view. I can move it closer or further away from the front view, but not side to side. So next, I'm going to select the front view, and then over here, the drawing view shows up. If the part has configurations, I can change the configuration here. I can also change what's the front view of my part. Currently, it's the front view. But if I would rather the left side view be the front view of my sheet, I can select it. I'm going to get the warning and I'll say yes. And all the views will update accordingly. So again, I'm going to select the front view. And I'm going to set it back to the actual front for my part. And answer yes. And again, all the views will update accordingly. The other options I have here, I'm just going to scroll down a little, is how would I like the view displayed? So I can click this. These are the same displays I had when I was in the solid model. So if I click this, I just see wireframe details. If I select this one, I see the hidden lines in each view. Or if I select this one, I don't see hidden lines. Here I can show it's shaded with edges or shade it without the edge detail. So I'm going to set it back to show hidden lines. And the next thing I'd like to point out is the scale. Currently, the sheet scale is 1 to 1. And over here under the scale, it says use custom scale. And what we really should change that to is use sheet scale because the custom scale was 1 to 2. So I've switched it to the sheet scale. And you'll notice how my part size has changed accordingly. If I do want the scale for this sheet to be 1 to 2, then I should change the sheet scale. It's important not to have a standard view in a scale different than the sheet scale. As people may pull out their vernier or ruler and measure something, if the feature dimension is missing or they think they need it. And the scale needs to be there so they're not making a mistake that costs a lot of money. And in the next video, we'll look at how to choose an appropriate scale for our part and set the sheet scale accordingly.